Welcome back. First, I want to start by saying thank you to every one of my subscribers. We passed the 1,000 subscriber mark, and it, it, it means a lot to me. And like I, I've always said, you know, I never thought I'd have one, and now we're over 1,000. So thank you to each and every one of you. I am going to do a 1,000 subscriber giveaway this weekend. So look for that on Sunday, along with those firewall rules. But what this video is going to be about is uh, over the last couple videos, one, we learned to install Webmen. And then the other one, we kind of talked about what DNS is. So this video is going to show you how to configure some DNS using Webmen because I think that that's an easier way to do it. So we're using a, a vanilla 16.04 Ubuntu install. So to configure DNS, now what should happen is I, I purposefully removed it. And there's two different ways, and the, and the reason I did that, there's two different ways that you should be able to configure DNS or get it up and going on your Ubuntu server. The first would be when you're actually doing the install and it asks you what you want the server to do. You know, that screen where it says LAMP server or it says mail server or SSH server. Well, do you remember the, there's a little box that says DNS server. So when you do the install, you could select that and then it would install bind. And Bind is the Linux-based DNS server that Ubuntu uses. So I've removed that package, so let's make sure. Okay, you can see it's not even showing up under server. We'll make sure it doesn't show up anywhere else. Nope, doesn't show up there. Doesn't show up under system. So it's not, Webmin didn't detect it. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to pretend that you know, this is an Ubuntu system, and you can see we're on 16.04.1, so we're not pretending we are actually on this, this system, but we're going to pretend that we, we didn't install it, and now we want to install it. So to install the DNS server, we'll do a sudo apt-get install bind9. It'll go out. It'll buy, uh, download everything that it needs and will install Bind9. Looks like it's got it set up. So let's refresh this and see if Webmin automatically detects it. It did not. Let's see. What if we refresh the modules? So anytime you add software, if there is a, a, a module that can be used and it's installed by default, you can click Refresh Module. And look, now we see our Bind DNS server shows up. So this is bind, and I will tell you I've administered bind servers from the command line. I believe that Webmin gives you a much easier way to do it. Otherwise, you have to edit text files, and it becomes overwhelming if you're, if you're new to it. So... The first thing we're going to do, the first thing I, I would tell you to do is to get familiar with all of these options, all of them, because this video, and, and we'll probably actually do some more in-depth videos, but this video is going to show you how to just set up a zone, and it'll be a master zone, and it will be for uh, widgets.com, and this will be uh, on our internal network, not our it won't be our external DNS server. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look and see what existing DNS zones we have. We've got the root zone, and then anytime you see these numbers, these are usually uh, reverse zones. So with DNS, you can do, uh, you look up, you match um, names to IPs. Reverse DNS matches IPs to names. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a master zone. And a master zone is where you can actually manipulate the records. And we'll go through the record types. A slave zone is a copy of a master zone, and it cannot be uh, manipulated. But you can convert a slave zone to a master zone. You can create forward zones, delegation zones, and then you can create zones from batch files. You can this get to know this interface if you're going to start messing with DNS really get to you know play with it in your lab break it learn how to fix it all that good stuff but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a master zone 
and you can see it wants to know what's the zone type. Is it a forward or a reverse? So forward does names to addresses and reverse does addresses to names like we talked about earlier. So this one we're going to call widgets.com. And then it wants to know where's the records file. We're going to let it just do that automatically. Uh, it wants to know what the master server is. And we can leave it at the default for now. We're just messing around here. We're just kind of configuring it. And then an email address. And do we want to use a zone template? No. Your refresh time. So we could actually make this as low as, as uh, 60 seconds. And now we'll create the zone. So now we are in the master zone for widgets.com. And look at all the different types of records types of records that we can create. Addresses, name servers, aliases, mail servers. So like mail server you'll hear MX record. That's what this is. Uh, information, text, so like uh, well actually SPF, sender permitted from. So if you want to try to limit the amount of if you've got a domain and and people are spoofing email from your domain, set up an S SPF record. Well-known services, responsible person, reverse addresses, IP version 6 addresses, uh, DNS security, all kinds of stuff. Get, get to know this, Google it, ask questions uh, on the video down below. Um, so then you can also see if you look down here, uh, we can check the records and so bind will check the records and report any problems you can convert it to a slave zone or you can delete it you can also freeze and unfreeze the zone but for now you know we'll just um, we'll add we'll add a simple address record okay and so what this is is we're just gonna call this www right and then we'll put in 172.20.10.11. And can it update the reverse? Sure. We'll let it re update the reverse. So now we have a record for www.widgets.com. It's using the default time to live. And the address is 172.20.11. So now we can return to the zone list. And now you can see under existing DNS zones, now we have a widgets.com. So, oh, you know what our problem was earlier? Bind wasn't started. So we're going to apply we're going to apply the bind configuration. Now let's see what happens. There it goes. So now you can see it's resolving. Let's see if it resolves over here. Yeah, boom. There it is. So, it's resolving outside addresses. But let's see, NS look at www.widgets.com. And there it is. So we added, you know, the www, and there it's resolving to that. So let's, uh, here, we'll add, we'll add another one just so you can see how easy some of this is, uh, especially the forward lookup stuff, some of the you know, A records, the C names, things like that. Uh, canonical names or something else uh, that you'll probably want to get used to. So for here we'll call this Willie and we'll just use 10.10.10.10 and we'll create that. So now we've created a, uh, an, a record for willie.widgets.com and we pointed it to 10.10.10.10 we will... there we go. Return to zone list Apply configuration just to make sure we still got widgets.com down there. Let's do ns lookup www or willy.widgets.com. We'll look it up on our name server. And there it is. Now you see it's resolving to 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. Now here's something that we didn't do yet. So we're just going to run an ns lookup just on widgets.com. Because you know, if you go to a website, you can go to www.widgets.com or you can just go to widgets.com. But we never set an address for this, so what do you think it's going to do? 
Hmm, can't find widgets.com. So we come in here to the address. We're going to leave the name blank. We're going to put our address in here. And we're going to create it. So now you can see we've got this name that just says widgets.com. Return to this. We'll apply the configuration. We'll come over here. And now widgets.com is pointing to that same address. So this is just a little bit about uh, bind and, and DNS. Get, you know, play with it. If there's anything you want to see, let me know. Um, otherwise, we will at some point get into some more advanced configuration. Uh, here's real quick. Here we go. Here's one for some of you that are out there in Radio Land and you're watching this channel for a specific reason. Now, if my DHCP server is handing out widgets.com as the default domain, and I have this unify in there. If it's handing out widgets.com as a default domain and I plug an access point in and it gets widgets.com as its default domain and it does just a lookup on Unify, it is going to resolve that and your layer 3 adoption process should begin. So that's one of the things. So if you've got any questions, you've got any comments, leave them in the, leave them in the comments below. Let's make sure this works. There it is. You know, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And I've got, don't forget to come back this weekend for the, the thousand subscriber giveaway. I've got an awesome video I'm cooking up on some security related things that I really need to get out there. Um, so don't forget to subscribe and come on back. We'll see you at the next video.